It's been 100 days. I've been cooped up at home with my family since the quarantine started, and I haven't seen anything else beyond the four corners of our house. Occasionally, I would catch the slight warmth of the sun on my skin whenever I make the short journey from our house to my studio where I work. It's a journey of a few steps, but it reminds me of what's waiting for me when everything's much better. Being at home has suddenly given everyone so much free time. I used to think that if only I had the time, I could conquer the world and do everything. But as the first few days rolled on, I found myself so demotivated and I realized I didn't know how to handle all this freedom. In a weird way, too much time crippled and overwhelmed me. It was as if I could finally do everything that I've always wanted, but I couldn't push myself to move. I've stayed away from my desktop for a while, that, that to me was synonymous to work. I've put off a lot of tasks and barely went on social media, I, I don't know why exactly. I think I'm holding off doing actual work until the day this whole thing ends. I think my brain keeps thinking that any day now, things would just go back to normal and I could get my drive for life back. My workspace and this desk, the pictures on this wall, they've been up for six years already. I've been meaning to change it for the longest time. I already gathered the materials, but I kept putting it off for another day, and then another. Until I just never got it done. But I thought, I really should start betting on myself more. I should stick to my word if I promise to do something. So on day 95 of my quarantine, I finally pushed myself to get it done. On a personal note, I have been working towards the completion of my second album for some years now. Before the lockdown started, I have been wrapping up in the studio after months of arrangement and recording. Mid-March, I was overseeing the mixing sessions and making comments alongside my engineer. And before that month was supposed to end, I was scheduled to track vocals for one last song for the second album. But then, 2020 started kicking everyone vigorously on the behind and plans got derailed, schedules were thrown out the window. The whole world at a standstill amidst such a confusing and scary time. Suddenly, my big goals and dreams for the year the ones that I've built up in my head for so long, they felt so small. And I felt so ashamed for feeling so much. I admit that I mourned for a while, for all the momentum I lost, for all the plans that I have to put on hold. But in the grand scheme of things, I also felt like there was so much else that needed my attention. And I did not deserve to feel sad when there's so much pain and difficulty around me. But we all have vastly different circumstances. We all have things to do, things we care about, people to protect. And every day, I've been trying to navigate my way through understanding, patience, and empathy. As a full-time musician and artist, I struggled to find my place and purpose within this pandemic. I didn't know how to feel, and I was also unsure how best to contribute my time and talent. Eventually, live streaming became the new normal, the new way to connect to people who are also feeling all sorts of things. 
It became the natural avenue for me to help out by performing online gigs and raising donations that benefit communities in need. Throughout this process, I also rediscovered what the role of art is in difficult times like these. As a creator, it may be hard to see, but art can give comfort and heal emotional wounds. Art can also be a vehicle for escape, which doesn't have to be a bad thing at all, especially during this time when we all need it. Still, some days it would hit me harder, like a fish out of water. I wasn't used to having all this free time and not having the motivation to do anything. Pressured by my freedom, I let the days pass slowly, not knowing the demarcation between end of day and break of dawn. Reading a book by the window or watching TV with my family for long stretches of time those were things I used to feel guilty about before this whole pandemic even happened. And now, that's all I seem to know how to do. What is success anyway? What is being productive? Is it ticking off a bunch of to-do lists? Learning a new language in a few months? Whipping up the perfect Dalgona coffee? Is it commanding successful Zoom meetings? Finishing a long TV series? Or bonding with the family? Is it owning your time? However way you might want to spend it. For as long as I can remember, I kept ticking off my tasks like I was jumping hurdles. But I never saw an end to it, and I never gave myself time to look back on how much I've already done. To appreciate the work, and to celebrate it. These days, I no longer have my usual metrics to assure myself that I'm doing something right. But what I realized is, in the 100 days of quarantine, I have been very lucky to be at home with the people I love we have enough to survive and also entertain ourselves. And I know that's not the same for everybody. I'm lucky that we're complete and healthy. And we have the time to take on projects around the house, even learn new skills together. The plans I had for myself, they've changed and they're still being shaped by what's yet to happen. That uncertainty is scary. When will I get to do all of the things I set myself out to do? How will I measure my days? Counting small victories help. Sometimes, I listen to myself breathe and marvel at how well my lungs work. How it does a wonderful job to keep me alive. And really, being alive, that's all I could hope for. <laughs>